What I didn't like this particular week was the, I, I would I would just call it cringy attention that it received. Rather than just focusing on the scores and whether it was good enough, it was the, the it was the autograph seekers. It was the PGA Tour's own department making the conscious decision to send a team there to document it. It's just so cringy. It's so disrespectful for how I think you should be treating a 15 year old in, in this environment. And I also I also question kind of the, the the strategy that's involved here. You know, maybe it was to try and get Charlie, um, you know, accustomed to going low in a single day event, which is what you're, you know, that's that's going to be the case in, in anything, whether it's college golf, pro golf, like you're going to have to put the peg in the ground and see if you could shoot 67, which was the score that he needed to, to get in here. But he's also never played an AJG, AJGA event. He has a sponsor exemption coming up. He's never played in qualifiers for the U.S. Amateur or the U.S. Junior. You know, I, I highly doubt that Team Woods could th- could think that that Charlie could slip in under the radar and just and just play this pre-qualifier without him knowing. But the fact that they keep signing off on this is a little bit of a of a head scratcher as well. That's that's definitely something that Tiger needs to be asked in a couple weeks' time, assuming he plays at the Players Championship. What did you think of the attention, and what's kind of the strategy in the social media world to to handle it? I, I don't mind, you know, Tiger deciding. You know, Charlie needs to go out and, and do this more. To your point, and we had a colleague at Golf Digest, I think, did this during the PNC Championship, where he kind of broke down because you and I probably get the same questions all the time it's right around pnc like how good is charlie woods like his swing looks just like his dad is he going to be great and like our, our colleague jay coffin kind of broke it down in a very interesting way kind of pointed out like this is what his amateur record is and for the state of florida for his age group he's probably in the top one third he's not number one he's not number one in all juniors like it, it needs to be pointed out because he hasn't done those things that you just pointed out like he's a Good player. I think he was the fourth player out of five on his high school team that won the state championship last year. He was, four kind of the, he was kind of the five. He was kind of the five six man that ended up winning the state championship. I mean, he clearly has a lot of talent. Anyone who watches the PNC is like, ooh, that dude's got a great yeah. swing, got tons of speed, like a lot of potential there, but he's not there yet. No, he's not. So you, you, one half of this is looking at it from the dad's perspective. You know, just because your dad's Tiger Woods, he still has to make the same decisions we have. And, and you'll have to make the same decisions with your kids at, at some point when it comes to whatever sport they choose to play. Do you push them? Do you want them just to enjoy it? Do you want them to, to push themselves against better competition? That's what this feels like. He wanted to do. He wanted to send sort of Charlie into the fire and see like, OK, this is what you have to do when you have a pencil in your hand and a scorecard in your back pocket. You've got to post some sort of score. You've got to figure out a, a way to get it around for 18 holes that I'm fine with. Going back to the part about the attention when it ends up on Sports Center, And I guess Bronny is a really good comp because I have rolled my eyes when I'm watching Sports Center and I hear them talk about Bronny getting three points in the second half against whoever. And you're like. I'm sure someone on their team got more than three points like that. That could he could have been the high scorer in the second half. Like that's not fair to him. That's not fair to the rest of the team. It's kind of not fair to the sport. It's the nature of media. Um, we're both in media. I understand that. But yeah, again, you just felt like it, it was just dirty. And I, I don't know that there's any way around it. It's not going to scale back from here. Every time now he shows up at that U.S. Open qualifier or maybe even another Monday pre-qualifier, it's going to be the same thing. And like, obviously, I was not around for Jack Nicholas's children's pursuit of a professional golf career, but the the game has just changed in in myriad ways with social media. Everybody's a keyboard warrior. Everyone has a cell phone. Like, there's just there's nowhere to hide. Whether he's playing in high school golf, whether he's playing in these sorts of qualifiers, whether he's playing in the PNC, like, there's just such a microscope now that that children of famous athletes endure. It's just. It's just a very unpleasant place I can imagine that you would want to reside. You know, I would not want to be in that position. You you want to have every um you want to have every right, you want to have every opportunity to kind of chase your dreams and there's so many more obstacles that are put in front of these kids of famous athletes now than that just didn't exist 20 or 30 years ago. And so I certainly empathize with that. I I understand the attention certainly, but I empathize with Charlie, I empathize with Tiger trying to kind of protect him as 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 long as you can. But it's just it's a cruel, vicious world, and it's it's gonna be really, really difficult to to make it. Well, and I can kind of see the thought process here because I've watched Tiger's 
attitude on this change since he first since Charlie first played in the PNC. That first year, Tiger was very, very protective, as he should, with I think Charlie was 12 at the time when he played in the first one. Like I I, I would be just as protective. I would hope I'd be just as protective with my kids, where he didn't like he wasn't involved in the interviews. He didn't want to do any post game stuff with him. He just wanted Charlie to be there for the golf, be on the range, be be there for the golf. It changed at last year. It has evolved to the point that Charlie is right there next to him. In the post round, you can tell the way he carries himself. And again, I think this is Tiger Woods, the dad, push, pushing his son to take on new things, to experience new things, because it sounds to me like he's he remembers what his dad, Earl, did with him. And OK, I need to push Charlie in this particular case. And it, it, luckily, he has this, quote unquote, luxury of being able to put him in the, the spotlight and decide how it's going to sort of unravel. I don't know, because I wouldn't have seen this coming. I wouldn't have expected it would have gotten as ugly and dirty and people demanding autographs and, and selfies and needing so much security at a at a pre-qualifier. Like, I, I'm kind of with Tiger on this one. Like, I would have had no idea that it was going to blow up to be that disgusting. It's gross. I think the PJ Tour uh, sending a video team uh, is a decision I'm sure was, was highly scrutinized uh, inside HQ as well. But I wonder if there's any regrets on making it a bigger deal than perhaps it was.